personas are, are likely not new for many of us um, on today's call. Um, we find that these personas in particular give us that chance to, to really go deeper, um, as you say, Graham, and, and to really um, you know, give our, our leaders and our, our people managers all the possible tools and techniques that, that help them uh, to be better leaders, to be better um, managers of the whole employee. When we've done our research about the employee personas that are specific to where we see um, those who are driving this movement, uh, the, uh, particularly in regards to great resignation, we kind of boiled them down to five different types of personas. Um, the aspirational, and I think if you're reading this, I'm just going to skim right through it, but you, you probably could see yourself or others in your organization in some of these, but the aspirational, you know, that's, those are your employees who who are likely on their LinkedIn or have so many pings coming in on their phone and, and in their email because they just really can't keep up with the number of recruiters and job offers that are coming in. And there's no surprise there. They're, they're extremely driven and career-minded professionals who are, we'd say skilled enough doesn't mean that they're not uh, competent, but that they've got a growth mindset and they're ready to give it a go. Um, and they're certainly confident and able to be out in market and ambitious uh, particularly as it relates to how it might accelerate their career um, progression. You've got the techies. Now, this is a different version of techies than what you might expect. They are techies, um, but we, we thought this was an important group because there has been such, as we've talked today through um, listening to Kay and Graham, uh, the need and the demand for technical skills and for those who would traditionally be uh, attracted or lured to the Atlassians or Canvas or Googles or Facebooks are in high demand, obviously, at the major banks, the insurance companies, uh, and certainly at the telcos and in the mining sector. So these are the techies, we say, who are at a non-tech space. And so they are asking themselves, I don't know if I missed that table tennis uh, location anymore. I, I, geez, you know, where are my beanbags and my three-minute massage uh, moments uh, in the office? So there is a slight disconnect potentially with some of these, and, and that's where uh, we, we wanted to highlight this group because there has been a lot of movement, a lot of great work by industry to build these techies and or recruit them away from the traditional homes of these techies. But we've got to watch out, right, because these folks are uh, a little different than um, uh, others who are really aspirational and in, in need for the perks and benefits, um, really looking for diversity and thinking about that and in ways of working um, and certainly um, talk a lot with their friends about it. So um, we thought we'd call out the techies because we do know there's a lot of that in our market sitting in, in different parts of the industry. Carers are clearly, and this has been raised already today, um, I, I think by Kate and, and, and I know for myself um, as a working mom, uh, the pandemic has indeed disproportion, disproportionately impacted certain groups. And one of those um, we could say in our data tells us is in the area of CARES. Um, in this particular instance, we are showcasing uh, families and particularly working parents, but we do, we do ex uh, include CARES of all sorts, whether that be caring for disabled um, or elderly family members. The point is, is that carers uh, have absolutely, uh, you know, need that flexibility, um, quite comfortable with everyone and their pets in on every meeting um, as needed. Uh, but they are overworked. And that's because they've always multitasked and, and have always had that capacity to do so much uh, in their day. But these carers are are certainly um, hungry and looking for that next step and caring shouldn't be a choice, uh, but rather part of one's day. Um, enlightened is the other, is the next group. I think we all probably have seen elements again of our team members or ourselves um, in this group. And, and we, we call this group out because it, it has been an emerging group, not because it, you know the fact that you might care about almond milk or not, or working out of a caravan hasn't existed before, but it does absolutely show in the statistics we've seen, um, the number of sabbaticals, the number of truly flexible work, work from anywhere WFA, um, all of those types of things really start to emerge as benefits and themes across organizations who are really competing um, and guarding against the great resignation. And last but not least, the balanced. Um, you know, this is a group that 
is absolutely overworked and underappreciated at this point in time. And so they are constantly asking themselves, you know, and telling themselves there's got to be more to life than this. These are loyal employees, by the way. They they often have great tenure. They have often gone above and beyond and, and often do see and haven't been able to manage as well those blurred lines between office and home. So when this pandemic came about and, and it became a full-time five days a week work from home, this, this really did create a massive burnout risk for this group. Um, this is a group that would certainly appreciate the flexibility. And in fact, if we had a vote, they'd vote for that four day work week or something even more flexible than that. So I wanted to point out, I went through that very quickly because I wanted to get the points of view of those on this panel in terms of where you might see parts of your organization um, lie. You might see all five of these uh, in your current teams today, but I'd like to just open it up really quickly to Kate, Graham and James, just to chime in on, on, on what you're seeing here and, and how much of this might be uh, existing in your current teams. Yeah, it's definitely, I think the personas, you know, what we find is there is a little bit of every, these personas are all at MBN and a series of others. So how that, how we answer and respond to that without creating, um, you know, multiple versions of every project and every outcome is a challenge. But yeah, we're, we're definitely seeing um, these personas come to life. And I think the demo, different demographics that we have, um, whether it's age or, or some of these other factors, um, just heightens what's most important to people um, at different points in their life as well. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, Kate, uh, Kate just touched on the point that I was going to talk about actually is around where are you at in life is going to have a big determinant, I think, um, you know, kids, young, old, <coughs> etc. versus uh, starting out, no debt, just moving out of the coop from mum and dad, you know what I mean, there is a, I think there's a different sense of personal responsibility as well, which will come into this. But nevertheless, I think overall, um, you know, uh, parents and aged parents and the like as well are starting to influence, um, you, you know, decisions around is it careers, is it balanced and, and the, you know, maybe I'm being too aspirational, I should look for a better balance in family life and the like. So I think there's a fair bit of self-assessment um, brought, brought on by an unconscious self-awareness uh, nudge that's occurred through, uh, through COVID. I like that. I like software and snudge. It's good. I like it. James? And I'll add to that. There are six key trends we're seeing. I won't, in the interest of time, match them all up to the personas. Trend number one is we're seeing a lot less like-for-like -like transitions. So coming out of one role, going to a similar role. Two, much more portfolio career work. So people are taking charge, doing consulting, uh, spending that extra day a week on a passion project or something that's meaningful to them. Third, tighter employment markets have given two things. One, greater negotiation ability for individuals in the market and, and whether that salary bonus benefits really depends what's important to the individuals. Four, shortened times for people to find a new role. So we're seeing those decrease in some instances by months the amount of time it's taken for people to find a, a new role. More changes to direction. So the reskilling I mentioned before and employers are offering reskilling as part of the programs on the way out of an organisation. Uh, and final point is a real interest in future-proofing their career. So how do I, it starts becoming more and more uh, a part of their thinking around, am I in an industry or am I in a role that is not future-proofed and how do I go about doing that? Really good points. And, and I think that leads us really nicely into this slide that we'll just um, live on for the rest of uh, the few minutes we have left here. But we've touched upon, all of us on the panel have touched on these various ideas to embrace this opportunity. And if I haven't made it clear myself uh, from my perspective, I do view this as an opportunity. I'm an, I'm an eternal optimist. So I, I, I believe that whether or not we think this is a great resignation or realignment or whatever it might be called, I think it is absolutely a great opportunity. And it's, it's, it's a great opportunity for leaders to come through, but I actually really think the power is in the hands of our, of our employees. And when we think about the various ways that we as leaders, as organizational 
designers, um, as people who, who just want to nurture an organization through to a sustainable place. You know, the ideas of being able to create that adaptive working style, we've talked about that today. Clearly, learning and skills is key. And, and we actually mentioned this in two ways. One, in terms of the way in which we recognize skills and might think of them differently. Um, there's a specific way we talk about that at Mercer called pay for skills. But the point is that the skills we believe are the new currency um, in this current market. And, and so the, the two go hand in hand that not only should you uh, future proof your career, um, be given all the opportunity to grow, most importantly, grow in the areas that you want to craft your, your life, what is most important to you, should also be recognized and, and not come at a cost uh, to your ability to be financially stable and um, secure. Uh, we have talked about the employee experience quite a bit on today's discussion. The reason for talking about personas in the way we just did is because those are quite core to what organizations often use when they're thinking about designing or redesigning or refreshing employee experience, a way to get into the heads of our employees. And, and if, again, if this hasn't come through as a strong theme, uh, the more intimate we can be uh, in accordance to the needs of our, of our team members, the better off we all are. Um, we also said that, look, pay is still king. It's still important to get that right. And not just pay though, we also talk about benefits. And so when we talked about techies earlier, the importance of a total package, a total rewards um, philosophy is really important. And last but not least, and this is as uh, James pointed out very well, and Graham and Kate, it's leadership. Leadership has always been everything. Um, and how we're going to get through this will have so much to do with our leaders. Um, I know that we are just uh, a few minutes away from the end, but before we might wrap up and I might actually just mention that what we will do with Q&A, and we do see a number of questions in Q&A, I'm sure my fellow panelists are looking at them as well, and they're great questions. What we will do is um, we will answer all of them and, and make those answers available in the um, recording and the links that will go out to all uh, participants who joined today and we'll certainly solicit input from Kate, Graham, and James as well. So you have their perspectives and these answers. Um, but I might just, um, again, open it up to panel for any, any closing comments, uh, particularly um, tips and recommend recommendations to the group as we embrace the opportunity. All right, I'll, I'll, um, I'll jump in, Cynthia, just to be really quick. I think, um, and that just comes back to a point I said before, which, which is around a, uh, a destination of choice. I really think the EVP of companies is going to change and it's going to be tested. And I think, um, again, just coming back to the focus will be on a destination of choice, um, more about helping people to be, uh, be more holistic and, and bring a holistic life into the picture. So I think that's one fundamental change that I think will occur and will influence attracting people. The other reason I'm going out on a limb here but this is more about the retention and, and or seeing it as the opportunity of why would I want to join another company? I think the opportunity for ownership, whether it be through share appreciation rights programs or other, other mechanisms, I think the opportunity to, to offer ownership to people in some form is going to become a, a fantastic opportunity to, to bond to people for a longer term and attract people. At the end of the day, people need money, but it's the mechanisms in which we do it. I think those two together are going to be quite powerful if companies can get it right in addition to servant leaders. <laughs> good plug, good plug. Um, Kate, from, uh, any final words from you? Yeah, thanks, um, Cynthia. I think, um, I think what we're hearing is that employees want thoughtful consideration and attention. They want to get a sense that MBN or, or any organisation values what they value, that there's an alignment there, whether it's their careers, their development, their time or their wellbeing. And the other point that I think is really important is what attracts people and gets them in the door may not be the same as what keeps them there. And so often having, understanding the difference and that our journey that people have is really important as well. Thanks. Great distinction, Kate. And finally, James, final word. Picking up from Kate's comment, look at the talent you've got first. Make sure you're actually looking after the people you already have. And so a lot of time and effort is going into the concept of wellness for your employees. Think about the term career wellness. How much are you looking after the career wellness of the talent you already have? 
That's excellent. Look, we thank everybody for joining today.